In this video today, I want to share with you my favorite color pencils and my favorite mainly Tombow markers, but there are a couple other, at least one other brand thrown in there that I want to show you. But before I get to my pared down favorite of all favorites, I want to first show you how I use color pencils, especially markers. I feel like you may wonder why would I choose to use markers instead of something like paint. So I want to show you a couple of examples and show you how I use them and then I'll get into color swatching and telling you about my favorite colors and brands, all the things. One of the first ways that I will use markers is as a base layer. So this was a day that I just wanted to get outside for a few minutes. This was in my yard. I took markers and neo colors and some color pencils. I would have started this sketch with the markers I can see right here. So I'll just get some masses in. I can tell that I used marker here for the house and for this tree, I started blocking it in. Sometimes I'll go back and add more texture and color, but this day was about capturing some of the fall colors. The sun was out there. There were some big shadows. It was about a really quick end of the day sketch. I just wanted to get something down on paper and play and sit in my yard. I'd probably been sitting at the computer all day. But what I will do is use something like this then to create something like this. Again, just another sketch, but I used this as my reference for this. And in this one, I used a different material. I used gouache and changed the perspective up just a little bit. Let's see if I can get both of them in shot for you. Left some things out, but took cues from this and played. So this is how I use them a lot. Let's see what I have marked here. Ah, yes. This is one, well, let me show you this first. This is one that I did with a young friend of mine. And this is one that we did a, a, a collab on. So we both started with markers. I had a sketchbook and he had a sketchbook. And we had a timer and blocked in shapes. So he, this was uh, one that he started and you can see all the marker and the marks underneath. And then when the timer went off, I think it was like, uh, let's see, first five minutes swapped. So every few minutes we swapped not only sketchbooks, but changed up materials. And I got this very lively, fun sketch that I just kept thinking about because of look at all the marker that you can see. I used Neo Color on top of this too and looks like color pencil. And then on another day, I used that sketch as my reference for this one. And at the end, there's mainly oil pastels, but look at the sky and all the neat texture. That's because I started with marker and I ended up leaving that for that distant sky because there was such nice texture. So that's how I will do that. Let me show you one or two more examples. Let's see, I'm done with that one. This was another one on location, so at the actual place, and I used marker, color pencil, and ink markers. And so I can tell here, these were some of the first layers that I laid down capturing shadow. What I'll do is just really kind of get in there quick and fast. I can tell I used a purpley color that I laid the sky in, and then I went over it with probably color pencil and neo color. I blocked in the trees with marker and then I went back over them. So I'll just start blocking in because markers are so much more transparent and everything can go over them. And then I think I may have one that I show you later that I did from this. And then sometimes I take them out. This is one I did uh, with my niece. We were out together. I will create exercises for us to do and this was a five minute left-handed and I mainly used markers. What's nice about markers, I can get them down fast and it's not like paint where I have to wait for it to dry. And then again, I can go over it very quickly with other things. Here are a few examples here of how I will use it for a drawing session. This was a Patreon that I am part of. I think it was Emma Carlisle's. And we were just drawing figures very quickly. And I decided to just use markers and I pulled out just a few different colors. And I loved how watercolor 
how it looked like watercolor. I can block in big shapes quickly. All these are timed and done very fast. Here's one more I wanted to show you. This is another example of a timed challenge, drawing challenge of a group that I'm part of, Emma Carlisle's Patreon. I'll, I'll link it below. This was a 10 minute, every minute we changed colors and I used markers and played with layering texture. So again, just a nice way to be able to get color down quickly. It dries, it can layer, it's thin like watercolor, but I don't have to wait for it to dry. It's also wonderful for the car. I take them all the time, color pencils and markers in the car and will draw from the car. So there's that one. I thought there was maybe one in here. I mean, I have so many examples, it's just not even funny because I use them so often. So I think that is all. Now let's get to actually color swatching and let me show you my very pared down fave of the faves color pencils and markers. Okay, as usual, I have a snoring dog by my side. We're just gonna, you know, that's just life. I have got my colors laid out. These are my favorites. And I've got them from lightest to darkest and warm to cool. The first ones we're gonna start with are what I consider and use most as my whites, whites. What I'm going to do is tell you the color, the brand. I'm not gonna write it on my paper because I'm gonna do that afterwards. I really just want a finished piece of like all the colors and then when I'm done, and film that later I'm gonna go back and write all the information because I'm gonna put this up on my wall for reference to remind myself these are my favorite color pencils, these are my favorite markers because I'm forever getting them mixed up. So let's just jump into it. This first one I use a lot. This is a Holbein and what is this color? I feel like it's always so hard to find like the names. This is Sand 175. This I use a lot for a white. I don't use a lot of Holbein's, but I do like that one. The next one is called Wheat. It doesn't look like I've used this one a lot, but it's a new favorite. It's a Derwent drawing. It's very similar. I probably do not need to have both in there, but I do. <laughs> There's a slight difference. One is lighter and one is darker. This next one is a Prismacolor and it is called Beige Sienna. Very nice color. I have to say I'm doing this just on like cardstock and it's white paper. I usually am working on cream paper but I thought for exact color it would be best to do it here. This is another Derwent drawing. It's called Warm Gray. And again, this is a new favor. That's why it's so big. It's a little bit warmer. Well, exactly what it's called, Warm Gray. Now we're gonna move into the yellows. Faber-Castell Polychromos. And what is its name? Its name is Cadmium Yellow. I don't use this a ton, but when I need it, I love it. Nice, bright sun yellow, a good, you know, duck bill or duck legs color. The rest of my yellows are much more neutral. This one is another polychromos Faber-Castell. It's called green gold. Nice, neutral, kind of yellow ochre. I do feel like these pencils are not going down great on this paper. I wonder if it's because of the cardboard. We'll try that. Try moving that out of the way. The next is another Faber-Castell Polychromos. It's called Raw Umber. I have this Derwent drawing and it's a brown ochre. Again, just another nice dirty yellow. This one's really creamy. I love the Derwent drawing because they'll go over basically anything. They even go over Neo colors. Pretty good. I mean, the snoring over here is so loud. This is another new favorite, a Derwent Lightfast. I'm 
quickly falling in love with this brand. This is called, I think that's called Lichen, Lichen Green. So it's called green, but to me it's a nice dirty yellow. I feel like that's a really nice array of yellows from bright. This is still neutral, but bright. Just nice dirty yellows. This next one is another new favorite, another Derwent Light Fast. It's called Dark Honey. It's such a great name. It's very in between yellow and orange. It could be used as a nice bright, dirty yellow. It's kind of transparent, but it's also orangey. I really have fallen in love with it. Very useful. Then I've got some kind of colors that I would use as white, but I've put them in my pinky colors. This one is Derwent Drawing Light Sienna. So it kind of works out good where it is falling on the color chart here. Really beautiful color. Then this Burnt Sienna 10% is a Luminance 862. It's a nice dirty pink. I don't like bright pinks, but this is just really, really beautiful. Then the next one is another Luminance 866, and it's Burnt Sienna 50%. Very matte, really great for the landscape, great for figure work. The next one is another Luminance. It is Crimson Aubergine 599. I do love drawing with this one. Oh wait, no, this isn't the one. But I do like this kind of poppy pop of a color. It's a little brighter than normally I want on my palette, but when you need it, you need it. I do like to use that for tree trunks also. The next one's another Luminance Burnt Sienna 069. Gorgeous dark. Nice to use instead of black. Nice warm dark. Now let's move into orangey kind of colors. I've got the dishwasher going and this loud dog snoring. I mean, I feel like I can never film with uh, quietness. This is Illuminance 876 Burnt Ochre 50%. Beautiful, very matte. Great for landscapes, great for life drawing or figures. Next one's another Luminance 077 Burnt Ochre. I forgot to leave room to do much writing. That's a little bit of a bummer. I'm really bad about that. I'll have to squeeze it in, which isn't gonna look great. This one's kind of transparent, which is nice. The next one is a different brand than what we've seen so far. This is Sterwent Color Soft. This has got the best, maybe, this one maybe wins the best name award, Pimento. Uh, I love it. It goes down really easy. You don't have to work hard to get the color and it is like the perfect dirty orange. It's really nice. Okay, this is a major favorite. Create a color, mega color, it's nice and fat. This is the perfect red. I only have this red because I can't find another more perfect one. It's a nice orangey red. It's going to look possibly orange since I said orangey red, but when you put it in the landscape with other colors, it reads red and it's perfect. And I love it. All right, on to greens. I have a lot of greens, <laughs> no surprise. But I think I have a really good palette of greens. I think I'm gonna bring my greens down here so maybe they'll be all in the same row. This next one is a Holbein and it's called Willow Green. Another really nice name. Light but dirty. <laughs> This is another Derwent Color Soft Yellow Green. This is a little bit darker and spring green, but still dirty. It's not scream in your face spring green. It's nice. It's very nice. I wonder how many times I'm saying nice in this. I'm really trying to refrain 
Okay, another Derwent Drawing Green Shadow. I have some of other colors in all of these that are similar, like other brands, but I'm almost always, if I have a similar color, going to choose the Derwent Drawing because it's a workhorse. It goes over so much. It's almost like Neo Color and Color Pencils had a baby, is what Derwent Drawing. So this is a little bit cooler, but light. The next one is a Faber Castell. It's like a watercolor Faber Castell. It's chromium green oxide. Very nice green. I mean, I really need to stop saying that because they're all really nice. If they're in this palette, I feel like they're nice. I mean, look how beautiful just this whole palette. When you see the end of it, you're gonna see it's a beautiful palette. Okay, Derwent Drawing Olive Earth, 516. These two are slightly similar, but I feel like I need to have them because this one's cooler and this one's warmer. Like I need both. <laughs> need. Oh wait, where was I? Okay, possibly. Mm, no, this is like second favorite green. The next one I'm gonna show you is favorite green. You can see how little he is. I love this pencil. Seaweed. Great name, great color, great pencil. Again, very similar to this one, but darker. It goes down great, nice, neutral green. Gorgeous, you are gorgeous. I love using it as dark, as a, like a dark or like a black, in placement of black. I draw with it a lot, I love it. But this is my all-time favorite green. This is my all-time favorite pencil. My other favorite pencil is right here, this black, but you can see the green wins the favorite race because of how tiny he is. Favorite, 719. It's a luminance and it does not have a good name because you can't say it. It's dark thalocyanine green. Terrible name. <gasps> Terrible. But the greatness of the color makes up for it. I use this in place of black a lot sketch with this a lot it's actually very similar to this one but darker I don't know it does look slightly unimpressive just like that but drawing with it is amazing I have to have that color this is another one that I love but I feel like I don't reach for it much I think because it's dark sometimes dark things that you can't really tell what the color is from the tip or from this it's hard to grab four. It's a Derwent Ink Tense, which means it's water soluble, intense color, leaf green, great name, and it's a dark, but it's warm. It's very seaweed. I would have called this seaweed. And looking at it though, it is very similar to this. You wouldn't probably need these two and this, but every time I color swatch that, I'm like, you need to be on here, even though I'm not using you a lot. Okay, we have another color called Pine. Stir with light fast, again, becoming one of my favorites. I put this literally right in between green and blue because I use this for blue, like in water, sometimes even for skies, but it's pine, so you know it's green. It's really great. It's very blue. So think of pine tree. just so different from all the other greens. But while we've got this close-up shot, can you just look at that gorgeous color palette of greens? It makes me want to eat them. They're so beautiful. I do agree that there's probably like three I could pare down, but they're there. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the blues. This right here, which is Prismacolor, it's called Jade Green. Now, I don't think that's a good name for the actual color. I do use this for green and blue, but I'm gonna start another row here for my blues. There are some trees that lean blue that I will use this color for. It's just nice and dirty. It's a great sky color. This next one is Prismacolor and it's another great sky color. It's called Muted Turquoise. It's brighter, but it's still dirty. Man, give me a good, 
dirty blue any day. <gasps> beautiful. Ooh, beautiful. Beautiful mask. I'm starting to sing. I need to stop. This is another polychromos. This one is called Light Cobalt Turquoise. I use this for like bright summer sky. That's what it feels like to me. It's nice for water too, but I usually go for a dirtier blue. But there's your nice pop of blue right there. Okay, if I had not lost my little one of this, it may have won the award for shortest, but I've lost it and it makes me sick because it was at the perfect size for using, but I can't find it. Mega color, create a color. I love these. They're not all equal. They're not all as smooth. I've got several of these. I've bought all the smooth, smooth good ones. It's ultramarine. This color rocks. It's amazing. It's fun to put down because it's smooth. It is full on ultramarine. It's just beautiful. I love it. I love using it. Okay, where are we? Here is another great one. This is another polychromos Perusian blue. Nice one for skies and dark things. It's kind of got a dirtiness to it, but bright. It's a little more transparent. I feel like my greens and blues, I have just a perfect range. This is a Derwent drawing, an ink blue. Love this guy. Love, love, love. Wonderful to draw with. Different than all the others goes down great, will go over other things. Just a really nice list of credentials for that guy. Wonderful pencil. Now let's look at kind of my browns and blacks and then we'll move on to purples. I have two browns or what I would think of as neutral colors. This is a Prismacolor 70% French gray very nice landscape color. Should I put it on a different row? Sure. It's neutral, but not boring. That's what I would say about it. If you're going to give me a neutral, it needs to have some life to it. And it's got depth of color. This next one, it looks like I don't use it much. Chocolate brown Derwent drawing. But when I need it, I need it and I love it. It's another rich color. It's great for replacing a black because it is so dark, but it's rich. It doesn't say boring. Okay, now let's move on to what I put in my black category. Possibly the one that I use the most for black or for drawing with something dark. It's called forest. So your brain thinks green. And I do think there's an underlying hint of greenness if you look really hard, but basically it's a rich, matted, beautiful black. And I love it. I mean, Probably on its own, it looks boring, but I can add it to a sketch and it doesn't kill the color. This is another good one. It's Luminance and it's called Dark Indigo 639. It is blue, basically a really dark blue. And again, very pretty. But I do reach for the forest before that blue one. And this, you can't tell anything about it. It is a Derwent drawing and it's called Ivory Black 670. I love this black. It will go over most anything. It's rich, but not boring. It goes down so easy. And it's a warm, rich black. Now, can you even believe that I have three purples? <laughs> but I do. They're very neutral neutral purples and I love them. Okay, the first one is Luminance 093 Violet Gray. Very useful color for shadows, for even for things that are white, for the clouds, for just things in nature, very neutral. Next one is Derwent Drawing Mars Violet 6470. Oh, another gorgeous one, a little warmer and even a little transparent. I do find that I go for this one 
more than this one. This is a great pencil. Derwent Graph Tint Aubergine 03. I don't use it much, but every time I think about taking it out of my lineup here and I swatch it, I'm like, why am I not using you more? You're wonderful. What a great dark with a tint of purple. Okay, there are the color pencils. Look at that color palette. It's gorgeous. Like You don't need anything else. I don't need anything else. Beautiful colors that all work together. That's how I feel about it. All right, down here, I'm going to swatch my markers. So at the end, I'm going to fill in all the numbers for the color pencils and the markers. And then I'm gonna show this to you so you can take a screenshot. And what I'll do is probably put just a, a, a letter for if it's like Faber-Castell or Polychromos, I'll put a P with the number. And then for the markers, I'll put T for Tombow. And I have a couple of Faber-Castell, I'll put an F with the number. This again is gonna be laid out from light to dark, warm to cool. So I've got some whites that I use for light colors a lot. This is the 910. The next one is a 942. They look a little bit dark at first, but they're just so nice as a base. The next one is a dirty yellow. This one's Faber-Castell and it's called Green Gold 268. The next one is another pit and it's Raw Umber 180. I really have to have some dirty yellows like that. The next one is, we're going back to Tombow and this is a color, if I remember correctly, that I use as yellow and as green. It's kind of a gold color, which is nice, again, to use as grass a lot. I use these kind of colors for grass a lot. The next one is, I think this is 027 but I'm not 100% because it's kind of rubbed off, but I'm pretty sure. Again, another gold, but darker. Then I have this nice rusty, hmm, this doesn't have a name. Oh, it does. Indian ink? No, no, no. 188, it does not have a name, but I love it. And I also love that it's basically running out because it's kind of scratchy, but it's a nice rust color. Then we have 947 in Tombow for a neutral brownie orange. Then let's go to our pinks, 761. This is nice for cheeks or lips when I'm doing life drawing, but I really like this next one, 772. It's very dirty for a pink. It's still bright, but dirty, and I use those two a lot in life drawing for lips and cheeks, like I said, but even this pink, I like it for landscape stuff. Then I have another Faber-Castell that's called Indian Red 192. It's kind of pinky. It's pinkier than this. Now let's go on to the greens. This next one is 131. I bet this is in the yellows, but I don't know. I put this in the green because that is just a really great, bright, warm, light spring green. Then I have a cooler light green that I really like. Oh, what number was that? 243. My next green is 228 and it's a Tombow. It is a cooler pine green. This is a great one, 177. It's nice and dark. I feel like it's got a warm under tint to it, undertone, and I don't know, just a good all around green. The next one, it's another one I don't grab for a lot, 379, but every time I test it, I'm like, why do I not use this much? I think it's because it has such a teal lid that that puts me off. I'm not a teal person, but it's really beautiful for water, but for dark areas in a landscape also, like undergrowth area or a tree trunk. It's rich and really beautiful. 
Now let's move on to my neutrals. I have some neutrals that I could not live without in my Tombos and I love them and I cannot pare them down. This is N75. I use this for skies, for blocking in things, just laying down a color because it's kind of got a little bit of a purple tint. If it was just straight gray, it would read very dead, but it doesn't. It's very, it's beautiful. This is N60. This is a little darker, and again, it's a gray, but it leans towards the purple. The next one is N79. This is warmer. This next one is N52. This is a gorgeous blue, if you ask me. Neutral blue. Beautiful. Talk about like a winter sky or dark rain cloud or a distant mountain. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, the next one is N57, a rich brownie gray. I love you, you're nice too. Now let's move to the blues. I only have four blues. 491, this is my light blue. I hardly ever use this, but I will block in a sky or water with this. And it's nice for just kind of a bright under tone reading through. This next one's probably my favorite, 526, my favorite blue. It's not too dark, it's neutral, it's not in your face, it plays nice with all the colors, and I love it. I reach for that a whole lot. The next two are darker, 555. Five, five. Did I tell you what that one was? That was 526. This one is 555. Five, five. Very ultramarine. I mean, just straight up ultramarine. That's probably what it's even called. Then this next one, 565, is also dark, but it leans towards purple, but reads blue. So it's blue with a purple tint-ish. The next two are what I consider purples. 553, a nice neutral purple. I do use this a lot, along with the, these three right here to like block in a color. Because though I'm not a big purple fan, that underneath other colors is very nice. This one is darker, it's 569. And this is basically a dark navy purple. And I would use this as a black. I don't have any blacks in my markers because it would read way too sharpie marker black. But this reads beautifully as a black. Look at that color palette. Hello. Yes, all day long. Gorgeous. I wish I had left a little more space here. Maybe I'll chop it. But those colors, the markers and the color pencils work beautiful together. Let's look at this, just the markers. Those colors look beautiful together. They all work well. They sing together. They all say, yes, we like being together. We look great together. You can work with us and we're not going to fight against each other. I've been sitting here filling in my color chart and I realized I missed one of the color pencils that I wanted to tell you about. It's the Derwent Light Fast Light Bronze. It's again, not one I've used a ton yet, but it is a new favorite. So I'm gonna put it here. It's a dirty yellow that I love. It's very matte, where my Polychromos Faber-Castell is a little more transparent. But look how pretty and matte it is. That's one of the things I'm loving about these Derwent Light Fast. They're very creamy and matte. So let me fill that in. Where did my marker go? And then I'll have my color chart complete for y'all. D-L. bronze. Oh, I'm barely going to fit it in. Okay, then let me show y'all the full chart. Let me show it to you like this. So here's the color pencils. You can take a screenshot and then here are the markers. Again, you could take a screenshot. Let me see if I can get the whole thing in view right there for you. The 
Those are my favorites. Now let me just mention a few other markers because I do love them. I have really been enjoying the Eco Lines. This one is, well, they're rolling off. 374, I use this all the time. It's wonderful, I mentioned this in my last video, I think, in my favorites. To just block a shape down and get something down, it's so light, and so you can just put it down and then draw over it so easily. That's supposed to be a goose in the water. But then there's my mass and I can work over it. And even if I went and started drawing this a little different and had some of that color showing someplace else, it just adds some nice movement. Let's say I was like, oh, that goose needs to be up here a little more. I need that a little bit different. You still just, it's now you've added some texture and marks there. Then I also love this Ecoline 441. It is a gorgeous kind of Indian red. I love it. And I love these two greens, and I'm gonna show them to you. I think I mentioned them, my favorites. This is not the color. What I'm about to show you is not what, if you buy these, come with it. I mix these. That's what's great about Ecoline, is you can take this off. There's another part of the nib, so if you mess up the first nib, you can turn that around. But then you can add more either Ecoline watercolor to this, because you can buy it in uh, jars like this. Hold on and refill, but I use it to mix. And I don't just put the Eco line in here. Sometimes I use some of my other inks. So it's nice because I can neutralize these colors that come out really bright. So that one is 665, and then this one is 666, but mixed with, I think this, 374. I think I bought some of this and mixed it with that, but I can't remember exactly. Okay, I've already shown you that one. Then I've got some blues. Guys, I cannot remember if I've neutralized these. Oh, no, no. I have neutralized these. In fact, I think it's coming up in a video I haven't showed you yet. So, spoiler alert. So, when you get these, they're a little bit brighter than what you're seeing here because I've neutralized them. This one is 533. 533. This one is 508. I love them because they're quite watery. 551. It's like a lot comes out. And then I love this Faber Castell Dark Indigo also because I use it for black. It's basically like blue jean, dark blue jean color. So those were some extras that I wanted to tell you about. All right. Those are my favorites. I hope this video was not 500 years long, but it could be, and I hope it was helpful. I'll see you back here shortly. Bye, guys.